Well, hello, beautiful people. Hopefully you are having an amazing day. It's me again, <laughs> Ebony. Hopefully you can see me and things are clear. Let me let this down just a little bit so you guys are high level with me. Okay, great. So I just wanted to come on today. I have been doing the um, five day speaking challenge in five days, five ways. Uh, and it's been so, so good. I'm so grateful of the time that I've had to spend with everyone. And so I really wanted to just jump in today and talk about um, our topic for day three. Day one was, well, let's start with all five pillars, all five pillars, the mental, physical, emotional, financial, and spiritual development. This is my high five theory that I use when working with my clients. Um, it's the foundation, <laughs> the foundation that things can be built on or what you can use to connect with others, what you can use to connect with others. So I'm really, really excited to be able to chat for just a few minutes, nothing long, I promise, um, but wanted to just have a few moments to share. So the first day we talked about the mind, the mental, um, the M, I, N, D, okay? Um, the movement, the inner, the no, the power of that no, and D, that discernment. So um, it was really good to be able to jump into those things on Monday. And then on Tuesday, we talked about the physical, just about the look and feel of our of our bodies and being able to call myself beautiful and you know ways that that has contributed to what it is that I do and then also today three since we're talking about the pillars we're talking about the emotional a lot of people feel like mental and emotional are exactly the same but they are not so I um, just wanted to talk about that here quickly and then of course move on out of the way so today was a good day for emotional because it's been an emotional day for me um, I've been caring for my sons and I talk a lot in the past two days just about my postpartum depression and you know one of the biggest things associated with postpartum depression is obviously how you feel you know um, going through those moments where I was trying to figure out you know, how do I take care of my children at that time, my baby or babies, and how do I continue to keep, take care of myself? And the biggest part of that was combating, dealing with facing some of my emotions. Now, like I said, some people think mental and emotional are the same. It's not. And I'm going to tell you why. Because when we talk about the mental, we're talking about the mind, what it's capable of doing you know those thoughts that you have towards yourself now but when we're talking about emotions we're talking about feelings um happy sad angry those are emotions and when we talk about dealing with the foundation of our emotions we're really dealing with um, perceptions those things have a really big effect on who we are and who we're becoming and they have a huge effect on how we feel so when i think about my emotions and the foundations of those things, I have found myself really battling with understanding why I'm angry. You know, if that's the emotion that I'm feeling in that moment, why am I angry? Why am I frustrated? Why am I irritated? Why am I sad? And then focusing on the opposite end of the spectrum, what brings me joy? What makes me happy? What are all these things? And so when I was dealing with my postpartum depression, I found myself in this space where tending to my children was making me so frustrated, was making me so upset. And many people be like, but why, Ebony? You know, when we care for our kids, we're sowing in love and all this compassion. But then too, my body needed to heal. You know, in other cultures, when women have babies, they have a whole year to recover. But for me, I've been through so many different phases after having children. My first child, I was still in the military. Um, I'm going to be honest with you here. I had to take the time because they certainly weren't going to give it to me. So I got my six weeks plus some because I had time built up that I had, you know, put aside. And I was able to spend the amount of time that I needed with my daughter. And I took two months off. But guess what? It wasn't enough. I had to jump right back into working. I had to jump right back into um, caring for others and losing a bit of caring for myself. 
So my postpartum depression wasn't something that I could just sweep under the rug. And on top of that, my son and my daughter, they're 16 months apart. So in the process of me trying to get myself together as a new mom, I find out that I'm pregnant and I'm about to have another child. And so my son was born 16 months after my daughter was born. And here I am again, back in this cycle, dealing with the postpartum depression, trying to manage my emotions, trying to figure out ways to make myself feel better. And guess what I had to do? I had to find a therapist. I had to seek out some help, someone who could help me. I thought because of all the training, you know, I'm a coach and I'm a mentor. And I thought because of all the training I've had that I could really help heal myself. And I'm not saying that you can't, but I'm saying that I couldn't. And so what I did was I found myself in this space where I had to just let go and say, Ebony, you can't do this by yourself. Those emotions were coming up. I was feeling blame and I was feeling frustration and I was feeling irritated trying to tend to my little ones. I was breastfeeding and trying to care for them. And it was overwhelming. It was overwhelming. And I can smile about it now because I now know that I don't have to be superwoman. That I don't have to do it all on my own. It's okay to have the cleaning lady come and clean up. It's okay to eat Chick-fil-A one day with the kids. All of that is okay. And so I found myself in this space where I had to really manage my emotions. What did it look like for me to do that? Well, I had to say, okay, Ebony, this is how you feel. Why is it that you feel this way? Why is it that um, rocking your baby to sleep is frustrating you? Well, I was frustrated because my husband might have been laying over there resting, getting all the rest, right? And so guess what? This means I had to say, you know what? Hey, babe, I need more rest. I need more time. Can you take a day off or can you take some time to jump in here? Because I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed. I'm feeling like there's too much going on. My emotions are overwhelming me. And he's, guess what he said? Okay, <laughs> sometimes we get into these spaces where we're unafraid to verbalize what it is that we need. And so when we have these different emotions that come up for us, frustration, irritation, um, anger, or even like I said, the opposite spectrum, when we're experiencing moments of joy and happiness, what is it that brings us those things? And so even in those moments where I was feeling the latter of the spectrum, I had to say, okay, but what would bring me joy? What would make me happy? What would please me in these moments? And that's when I had to say, you know what? I need help. And that is a phrase that some people are afraid to mention is that they need help. <laughs> that they need help. Hey guys, I see you in there. I see you in there. Thanks for joining me. But we need help. We need help. And you can't be afraid to ask for help that help. It's something about meeting your own needs that is so beneficial when you are preparing to help meet the needs of others. And so when you think about what it looks like for you to really manage your emotions, for you to really step up and step into that thing, let me tell you something. It's so freeing when you can take a moment and realize, you know what? Having 10 minutes to myself where I can do some deep breathing <laughs> and really sit with myself and just be able to kind of calm down. That's great. But what if I need an hour so that I can have a little time to read or do some things that I enjoy? And oftentimes, like I said, when I was dealing with my postpartum, I was finding I was losing myself in the concept, the idea of motherhood. I was a, I, I'm a wife and I'm a mom. What else am I remembering all of my other skill sets and capabilities and not letting them go to the wayside? And so making time for me to bring value to the way that I feel was so important. And so even today, you know, I was really struggling this morning. Um, my sons um, have not been feeling well. I have been in prayer heavily for my sons. And you know what? 
that blame game, that blame game started to come in. You know, well, Ebony, they're not feeling well. What can you do? Um, why aren't you, you know, why are your children sick? You know, you homeschool. They're home with you. Why aren't they well? You know, that blame game started coming in. But you know what? I decided to manage my emotions. I said, wait, 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 wait. You know, is this something that I can control? Is this something that I have control over? All I can do is be mom in this moment. I can be here for them. I held my sons. I rocked them, made sure they had whatever they need. Hey, love, thanks for joining in. But as a mama, I was placing that blame on myself, trying to figure out why they were sick, why those things were going on. And guess what, mom, dad, whoever is watching, grandma, auntie, if you're caring for children, guess what? They get sick sometimes. It's okay. You won't be able to solve every problem. You won't be able to solve every issue. You just won't. And once I came to grips with that, I was able to be better. I even told my husband, I was like, man, when the children aren't well, it triggers my anxiety. I feel so bad when they are not well. But guess what? Somebody reminded me that it's in these moments when things around us start happening that we get distracted from what we are intended to do. So guess what? That postpartum that tried to creep back in, because people are like, oh, postpartum, how long can it last? You, Everybody is different. And there's no time limit, no time constraint on postpartum depression. Let me tell you something. Just keep continue to evaluate yourself. My grandmother used to say the importance of keeping our minds. My grandmother, <laughs> pastor's wife, um, grew up. She, we grew up the whole, all of our lives. She was the pastor's wife. She was in the church, okay? And she was caring for us. And she used to always talk about the importance of our minds being kept. And she's still saying it to this day at 83, um, living on her own, <laughs> driving her own car. But keeping our minds and dealing with mental, physical, and emotional aspects of who we are. And so today, when we're talking about that emotional foundation, laying a solid foundation for our emotions, we have to realize the importance of managing them, acknowledging them. You know, you're not, everything you feel is okay. It's okay to feel. People forget that even God had emotions. He turned tables over, okay? So he had different emotions that we don't, we sometimes forget. But when we think about where we are right now in our lives and the importance of managing those emotions, we can't forget how important it is for us to just take a little bit of time to consider why we feel that way, what caused us to be in that particular position or feel the way that we're feeling. So I hope that these few little tidbits are helping each day. Um, like I said, the mental, physical, emotional, financial, financial, and spiritual development of who we are, my high five theory. And each day I'm just sharing a little bit of information about each of those and my story and how I'm using it to be able to truly combat what it looks like for us to live in this life um, and seek out the help we need. And I am, listen, I, as a coach and a mentor, it has been vital for me to look at these five elements and how they have truly contributed to my life so that I could overcome and then show other people how to do the same thing. So I hope that this has been helpful for you just talking about these things. And we have two more days, <laughs> two more days of the speaking challenge. And we're going to spend some time looking at the, um, you know, we've done mental, physical, emotional, we're going to do financial and spiritual, which are two of the big, big elements to laying that foundation or connecting with others the way that we need to. So let me pray for you and then we're going to go, God, I thank you. Father, I pray for every person that will come in and see this, Lord God, that you're healing them in their mind, healing them in their physical and helping them manage their emotions, giving them the strength that they need to endure. God, we thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. We acknowledge your strength and your power. And it's in Jesus name that we do pray. Amen. I thank you so much for jumping in here with me. Five days 
five ways. The five day speaking challenge. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great night.